let's try something a bit different. Get on the freeway and try to get on a freeway by putting our foot into it. 187 horsepower, here we go. And it, it goes. Not the fastest thing out there, but if you, actually, you know what, I need to slow down because we got the local constable up there and uh, this is not a good idea to speak here. There's no doubt about that. So you guys remember Ken Sauer, he's our good friend from way back in 2012 when we built four SEMA show cars for Mazda. Well, he's the design manager on this, uh, and he and I were geeking out over design uh, at dinner last night. And there's a couple of things he showed me, like for example, they're doing the trick of making the grille significantly wider to accentuate the width of what really is a narrow vehicle uh, and gives it more road presence. But then in the opposite direction, most like European car manufacturers, or actually some of the Korean manufacturers, they're making the logo smaller to make the car look wider. Here they went in an opposite direction, and this thing is like one of those clocks you would wear when you're trying to wrap. Uh, and then another trick is the wheel. The Touring model, like the basic model, that one is fitted with 17s. This one is like the fancy Grand Touring. This is fitted with 19s. So rather than go to 20s or 21s, which would degrade the ride quality, what the designers have done is change the design of the wheel and through some color like this gray here and powder coating, they've given the wheel some depth but overall, the combination machine finish here, as well as the gray, it makes the wheel look bigger. And basically, um, that's Ken's bag of tricks. Okay, now that we're up to freeway speeds here, I do have to say, if someone did not tell me what the horsepower of this is, I would definitely say over 200, for no other reason than the size and heft of this. But, Considering real world uses here, let's put our foot into it. We've got a pickup truck in front of us. Let's try passing power. So, foot to the floor, number four cylinder, 187 horsepower. And we're going on an incline now. Please don't try this at home. Uh, is it an AMG uh, GLE 63S? No, but absolutely will work around town. If you are starting to see a trend between our tech review and this episode thus far, you would be correct. That would be small changes. There is a business case as to why. When Mazda came out with this, what is it, 2012, their goal was a quarter of their total global sales. Stepping back just a bit further, Mazda overall, their share of the global sales market is 1.8%. To give you an idea of comparison, a Toyota or a General Motors is almost 20%. So you get an idea of the size of this manufacturer. So they blew past their goal of a quarter of their total global sales at 370,000 units. But what's more interesting, this baby buggy crossover family vehicle for people in the middle class, they have sold almost 50% of them as the fancy Grand Touring models, specifically 48%. Okay, so let's stay on the freeway a bit and talk about driving dynamics in a different scenario than we normally do, because something tells me there's not gonna be a lot of canyon carving with a CX-5. Now, a bit behind the scenes, uh, the presentation this morning, they're usually about an hour, and they're all bullets and numbers. Today, it was two hours, and there was only two bullets and numbers. Everything was focused on, well, why is this better than, say, that Kia over there? Or why is it better, more importantly, why is it better than the car that it replaces? And everything was about improving the ride quality, but also improving the acoustics. So here we are going freeway speeds, up an incline, put our foot into it. And the first thing you noticed is there's definitely a, a better high-speed stability. There's no doubt about it. But overall, the, the thing you notice is you don't notice anything. It's still very much a Mazda but probably a more quiet Mazda. Okay, so time for the old Pelican trick again. But really, are we surprised that they fit? What we need to be surprised about is the change in the environment back here. Specifically, there's a lot more sound deadening equipment, like carpet here, carpet underneath a mat, 
and then there is a cover to the cubby holes. Now, I'd love to tell you that this is because of luxury, but that's not the case. To really unpack this, I think we need to talk to somebody special. So to help us with this, Dave is back on the show. You've got 60 seconds to tell us all the changes that you made in, what is it, NVH? Noise, vibration, and harshness, yeah. So make basically how, quiet. How, yeah, okay. how we make the car quiet. So how do you make the car quiet, 60 uh, seconds? Can't say it in the 60 seconds. It's a laundry list of hundreds of, of detailed changes. Yeah. But little and stuff. And you did all of them. No. I, but I did put the list. No, I asked somebody else to put the list together. <laughs> pretty much all I did. Okay. Hey, could you give me a list? But you can talk about it. <laughs> I can talk about it. Okay. I'm just going to look around and see what, what actually jogs my pathetic memory. Okay. Right. So, uh, first thing we want to do is make sure we don't generate noise that can then come into the car. So, yeah. if you look at the hood, you don't see the wipers there. The no, wipers are now below the hood line. So, the air coming across the hood doesn't hit them and generate turbulence. Okay. Right? Uh, we've tried to stop noise from the mirrors and the, and the turbulence out here. So the, the window is a side windows are acoustic glass, two layers of glass laminated over a, a sound deadening layer. Um, in the gap between the doors here, see that little seal right there? Uh, we added that. That's a third door seal, but that one plugs the gap between the doors so the air doesn't actually tumble in there and create the turbulence that the other seals are then trying to stop us from hearing. Um, we got that in the front door and the back door and the rear hatch. At the top of the hatch, there's a seal that seals between. Uh, closes the gap between the roof and the rear hatch. So it's all ball bearings these days. It's all ball bearings, yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got more sound ending in the doors. We've got a seal between the interior door panel and the door um, so that any sound that happens to somehow get into the door can't sneak its way into the interior. Noise that gets into the interior, we've got more carpeting to absorb sound so it doesn't reflect. We've got like the 50 pounds of carpeting you did in the there's, uh, CX-9. There's, there's, there's some sound editing underneath the carpet too, similar to what we did on the CX-9. Uh, the headliner is a different material that doesn't reflect sound as well, so it absorbs the sounds that get in here. Um, there's got to be more seals around here somewhere. Um, the, the, I figured uh, you'd exhausted all the seals. No, no, there's <laughs> we have so many seals. Uh, there's a... Um, there's a seal around, the, there's a plastic trim on the outside yeah. of the B-pillar that doesn't even connect to the inside, but we still put a seal behind it because you get a little bit of high frequency noise bouncing back and forth in, in there. Yeah. And we, so we, we've sealed that off. We've got seals for our seals. The chrome trim on the outside, uh, where it meets up with the, the body, there's a rubber seal there now because we don't want the chrome to be loud. It, <laughs> if there is a place to put a seal, we we've, put a, we've put a seal there. Yeah. It's, is there anything underneath the car quietly? So we have like a plastic aerodynamic under tray yeah. under the whole car. Um, we Now that's kind of felt lined because the, the tire rolling over the, the surface of the road that calls, creates what we call a tire pattern noise, which is kind of a high frequency sound. Yeah. And that felt absorbs that so it doesn't get transferred up into in, through the floor. Okay, I think that's way more than 60 seconds. I told you I couldn't do it. You could do Next time I'm going to get a stopwatch, but I'm <laughs> going to say this. He and I shot a special, like, pseudo inside the Moto Man studio where you and I talked about what you do for a living and even more changes you made to this thing. Yes, we did. So they need to watch that separately. Probably be a good idea. That's going to be coming up in a couple of weeks. They'll see it. That long? Yeah. yeah. I'm only going to hit him with too much Mazda. Yeah. Can't hit him with too much Mazda. There's no such thing as too much Mazda. <laughs> yeah, you <it> will. <laughs> so in summary, what do we got? A Mazda which is not a surprise and not a bad thing. Over the past couple of years, you and I have driven a number of Mazdas, including the previous generation of the CX-5, and they are cars that are built for car guys like you and I because they're built by people like Dave Coleman and Ken Sauer. Here, they really didn't screw with the driving dynamics or the engine. What they changed was the refinement on the interior and the design. And really what they've done here is you look at this thing in pictures and it doesn't do it justice because it looks like a mid-cycle refresh, not a totally new car, which it is. This you need to see in person to understand all of the changes. Now, the one thing they did change significantly is their goals. They're not trying to compete with Hyundai and Kia. What they are trying to compete with is Audi, Lexus, and Mercedes. So, I'm gonna turn this around to you and leave you with a question. And the question is this, do you think this fancy Grand Touring CX-5 behind me, which is, let's say, $32,000, does that compete with like a Q3, uh, an NX, 
a GLA, or I'll even go so far as to say a GLC. Tell me why or why not. Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV on Word, Moto Man TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I want to leave you with two things. Number one, make sure you download our fancy new mobile application, which you can download for free at Apple iTunes and Google Play. And number two, I want to leave you with a fun fact. So when I booked this trip, I got an email like a day after from my very good friend from university, Mindy Sue. And she says, hey, I'm coming to Southern California. I said, ah, I'm so sorry. I'm not going to be in town. And I haven't seen her in like a year or two. Well, guess what? I didn't come from LA to come here. I came from Denver to come here. I get on the plane in Denver, and who is sitting on the plane? But Mindy Sue. Until I see you next time, bish beta.